Hi folks, Philip Andrews here from the Adobe Photoshop Elements team and one of the big changes for Photoshop Elements 9 was the inclusion of the ability for us to add layer masks to our image layers. We've always had layer masks associated with adjustment layers in Elements but up until Elements 9 we haven't had the ability to add these masks to our image layers. So what do these masks mean? Well, I thought I'd start off by just showing you this example image here. If we look over on the layers panel you'll see that we've got a yellow layer sitting above a blue layer and if we just go and grab the eraser tool and simply erase back through the upper layer you'll start to see the layer from beneath and if you have a look over at the layers panel you'll see that what we've actually done is remove part of that upper layer we've erased part of that upper layer to display the layer that's sitting beneath so this technique enables us to be able to adjust the upper layer so that some of the lower layer can be shown through. We can also do things like go through and change the opacity of the eraser and then when I erase on the upper layer we'll get some of the bottom layer coming through and mixing with some of the top layer as well. But these kind of changes are pretty final. We've actually erased away the detail from the upper layer. So let me just go backwards. So I'm just using Control Z to go backwards. And let's look at the way in which professionals use layer masks to achieve similar effects. So with the yellow layer selected, I'm going to go down to the new Add Layer Mask button that you can see at the bottom of the Layers panel. And immediately when I click on that, button you'll see an extra thumbnail added to the layer entry in the layers panel. This is the layer mask thumbnail. You'll notice that I can click on the layer mask and select it. We get an outline border around the layer mask here. Or I can click on the content of the layer, in this case the thumbnail of the yellow for this layer. So keep that in mind because it's important to know the difference between selecting the layer thumbnail or the layer mask thumbnail when you're actually going about editing. So I have the layer mask thumbnail selected now and instead of using the erase tool what I'm going to do is go down and select the brush tool. Make sure that my foreground and background colors are set to default and you can do that by clicking the little default icon up on the left hand side just above the swatches there. Now you'll notice that my layer mask is white, so I want to ensure that my brush is coloured black. So I'm just going to click on the switch foreground and background colours so that black is now my foreground colour. There is a shortcut key for switching between these two colours as well, and it's the X key. Worth remembering so that you can quickly switch between black and white. If we now go up to the brush options bar, let's just drag up the opacity to 100% and watch what happens when I paint over the surface of the image. You'll start to see the blue from the layer beneath showing through. If we have a look at the layer mask you'll see that we've painted black onto a white layer and where the layer mask is black the detail from beneath this layer is showing through. So it's just like we've erased away the upper layer. So why is this important and why should we use this way of working rather than just using the erase tool. Well if we go back to the swatches now and switch those two swatches around so now we have white as our foreground color I can then brush back across this part of the picture with white and the details of the upper layer has now been restored. If we have a look at the layers panel you'll see that the thumbnail now has white going across the area of black that we originally painted and that's restored the yellow color. I'll just switch back to black now and drop down the opacity of our brush to around about 50% and you'll notice that we can brush through at 50% with a gray color on the layer mask and this will mean that some of the lower layer is mixed with some of the upper layer. So it's like semi-translucent. So the important thing to remember with layer masks when you're editing the layer mask itself is that black conceals the layer that you're working on, in other words hides it, and white reveals the layer that you're working on. And grey is a mixture of both. So how do we actually use this understanding when we're working with our images? I have a couple of other images down here as well. I'll just close down this example and I'll open up these other two photos. And if I flick between those photos, you will see that in one image 
we have really good detail in the foreground and in the other image we have really good detail in the sky. Both images were taken just a couple of seconds apart but with different exposure settings. Obviously the exposure setting used for this photograph favoured the sky whereas the exposure setting for the other photograph favoured the foreground. Now wouldn't it be great if we could get the drama of the sky and the detail of the foreground mixed together? This is a perfect scenario for us to actually use our layer masks. So I'm just going to go and select the two up option from our arrange menu. And you can see that we have both of the images here now. I'm going to select the darker image and then go over to the layers panel of the darker image, click on the background entry and drag it across to the other document, hold down shift and then just release the mouse button at that point. So if we now look at the layers panel for the lighter image you will see that we have the darker image sitting above the lighter image. I'll close down the other photo because we don't need to use it now. If I turn off or hide the upper layer you'll see the lighter layer beneath. So what we're going to try and do is combine detail from both layers together. But you'll notice as I flick between the two layers that there's a slight difference in the positioning of those layers. Because the camera was handheld when these images were taken, they're not completely in register. So what we need to do is try and align these two images together. And one way that we can do that is to select the upper layer and then go down and choose a different blend mode. In this case we want to select difference because what that does is it highlights the places where the two layers are slightly out of alignment. I'm going to go and choose my move tool now and I'll click and drag the upper layer so that you can see how it's ghosted against the bottom layer and you'll be able to see where the two layers are not quite in alignment. So what we want to do is with the upper layer selected we'll go up to image and then down to transform and across to free transform and we'll have now some handles at the corners and also the sides that we can use to adjust the photo itself. I'm going to hold down a control or command key and make slight changes to the upper layer to try and get it to match precisely the lower layer. So I'm looking for no telltale halo effects around the edge particularly of the roof of the opera house here. I'll just try and get it to match as closely as we can while we're in this difference blend mode. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Once we're happy with it, we'll click the green commit button and then we'll go back to the layers panel and just change the blend mode back to normal. So now we have the darker layer sitting above the lower layer. I'm going to go and grab the crop tool now and just crop out the edges of the photo that are uh, slightly misaligned because we brought the two photos together. Now with the upper layer selected I'm going to go down and click the new add layer mask button. Now we have a new layer mask associated with our darker image at the very top. So if we want to reveal some of the lower layer we'll need to paint onto that layer mask with black. So I'll make sure I select it first, go and choose my brush make sure black is my foreground and I'll just drop down the opacity a little bit so we're not getting a full strength effect to start off with we're just getting some translucence. Once we've done that we can start coming into the actual picture itself and painting with the brush which remember is not painting onto our picture but rather it's actually painting onto the mask and you can see it there to reveal some of the lower layer. I'll make my brush a little bit bigger here now by just using the right square brackets and continue to paint in the detail that we can from the bottom layer. So essentially all we're doing is revealing the detail from that bottom layer that was already there and we're using the mask to hide the detail from the upper layer as we're doing it. I'll just keep working away here using a slightly smaller brush to come up into this part of the roof, then making it slightly larger to work down inside the roof structure itself. One of the things about working with layer mask is that we can always restore the detail of parts of the image if we find we've made a mistake. This is particularly good in this kind of scenario. 
as we move up into this part of the roof here we might suddenly decide that it doesn't look very good having this too light and we actually want the sun rays coming through. So remember we can go across and select white as our foreground colour now or just hit the X key and change back to white and then brush back in the detail of the upper layer using a white brush. So by switching between both black and white and adjusting the opacity of our brushes we can actually make some very interesting combinations of different layers together. I'll just finish off by working on this back portion of the roof here. Drop down my opacity slightly more so it's just a very subtle change. Get a bit more detail in there. That's looking good. And maybe a little bit over this area here as well. So what we've been able to achieve using a layer mask that's associated with the darker layer and the lighter layer beneath is a combination of both the detail in the sky and the detail in the foreground. So try using the new layer masks as a way of blending your images together or combining the detail from two different photos as we have done here.